everyone, it's Nancy, your favorite innkeeper from Old Square Inn in Mountjoy, Pennsylvania in beautiful Lancaster County. How are you doing today? Um, I hope you saw the post. I have posted three weeks worth of recipes, so you can put that on your calendar and tune in and join us there. We're trying to keep things a little bit cooler in the kitchen. Hi, Joe. Thanks for joining us this morning. If you are with me this morning, please drop your name in the comments. Show us some hearts and we're going to get going. Thanks for joining me in my tiny little kitchen. But, you know, I was thinking the other day, look at this haircut or lack of haircut. I am truly starting to look like a long-haired, overfed, leaping gnome. I, I should be the star of a Hollywood movie. You probably don't know what I'm talking about unless you are a 70s child, but um, yeah, that's not really a good thing. It almost makes me want to sit in that uh, beauty shop chair. You know me, don't really care for it. Hi, Joan, good to have you here this morning. All right, we're gonna start with the tuna. And first I'm gonna get this base ready. I have one can of white albacore in here. You can use any, any kind you want. You could even use like canned salmon. That would be good too. I have a little bit of chopped red onion in there. Use any kind of onion you like. And to this, I'm going to add just a little bit of chopped celery because I like it when it has like a little bit of crunch and texture to it. But all the same, I'm gonna chop this up um, pretty finely. They don't want great big chunks, just want a little bit of texture going. I also have on my tray this morning some fresh dill from the garden. Oh, do any of you have herbs coming up yet? There. Yeah. Mine are baby herbs, but herbs nonetheless, and they smell so good. You know how I am about smells. Delicious. Okay, so here's the herb dill that I plucked from my garden and um, I don't even have to plant this anymore. It comes up all by itself. So I'm just going to pick a little bit off the tops of these and I'm not even going to chop them. I'm just going to sort of tear them up and put them in like that and just mix this together. Next we're going to make the green goddess dressing that goes in this. This is very dry. That, that's okay. I like to get the tuna in water not the oil. All right, set this aside. And um, now this you can mix up in a blender, but I want to show you this really nifty device I have. This is a product by Oster, or Oster, however you like to say it. This comes off. That's pretty slick, right? And then it comes with two pieces. Um, you can use this with it. So you can just put this in here and um, work it up that way. Or look what else it comes with. It comes with like this tiny little food processor. So this lid comes off, this comes out so you can wash it, and that's what I'm going to use today. And then this comes off and sits on the lid, just like that. And then this will screw on top and then make that little blade run. It's a blade runner. <laughs> so cool. All right, so for this, I'm going to use about a quarter cup of basil leaves. This came from my garden. You saw me start those seeds a long, long time ago, right? And it says a quarter cup. So when you're measuring things like this, this means loosely packed. You're not going to pack them in there, just kind of whatever sits in. This is probably uh, a little bit much, but I like basil. Ah, uh, smells so good. Put my basil in there, have a little bit of parsley to put in there, again, about a quarter cup. Now, it also calls for fresh tarragon, but I don't have that. The ratio of dried to fresh is about one quarter, and I know that there are four tablespoons in one quarter of a cup, so technically I would use one whole tablespoon of this, but we didn't have those uh, so tightly packed, so... I'm going to cut that down to about a teaspoon, uh, half a teaspoon. And look, that, that's a good, healthy, eh, can go a whole teaspoon in there. That sounds better, right? And all of these things smell so good. Tarragon smells a little sweet. Mm, kind of reminds me of licorice a little bit. So good. 
All right, then on top of that, I'm going to use a quarter cup of mayonnaise and a quarter cup of sour cream. Do you remember this handy dandy device I showed you before when we were making something with peanut butter? And Nicole and Graham got this for me. You just, you put this in here on the top and I've dialed it down to a quarter cup. Yep, got a quarter cup, oh, almost. Dial that down, quarter cup, there we go. And then I'm just going to fill this up with my sour cream. And then I'm going to dial it back to a half a cup and fill it the rest of the way with the mayonnaise. Gotta get the mayo in there, right? This is gonna be good. Now these are ready, especially the mayonnaise is salted a little bit, but you're gonna find that when you make um, your tuna salad, you're probably gonna need a little bit of uh, salt in that. Okay, so we have a quarter cup of mayonnaise. We have a quarter cup of sour cream. That's going to go right in here. Beep. How easy was that? So easy. Come on, get off. There you go. All right, then it also gets a little bit of lemon zest. And this is what gives it like that total brightness, really picks up the flavor a little bit. So I'm just gonna grate a little bit of lemon zest right on top of here. And you know that when you're grating, you only use the yellow part of the zest. It got some back there. Not that white pithy part. There. And some of this is a matter of taste. And then I'm going to put in about two tablespoons of lemon juice. I know this is a quarter cup. I know that there are four tablespoons in a quarter cup. So I'm just going to squeeze this, squeeze this into here, maybe about halfway. That lets me get the seeds out of that. A little bit more there. And now I'm gonna show you this. It has a lot of seeds in it. See that? All those seeds in the bottom. So when I put these in, I'm just gonna do one of these. And then all the seeds are left in my hand and get rid of those. All right, let's make some room here. Now I'm going to fit this little piece. See, it has this little hook in there that goes right on top of this little piece in there. And it's kind of cool because you put this on and twist it into place. So now that's solid. Then I'm just going to take this little fun osterizer thing. And All right, that's looking pretty good. Let me show you what this looks like so far. See what we have going on here. And then to this, I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. Okay, right in there. One. This kind of makes your dressing hold together. There we go. Ooh, looks so good. Get my lid back on there. We also have eclair cake to make today. There we go. All right, put this on here. Get her going. And just let it go. See what's happening in there? And this is also... Starting to turn a little bit green, hence the name Green Goddess. Oh, that looks so yummy. So yummy, I'm gonna taste that. Just, just for fun, let's taste it. It's gonna have all these fresh herbs in here. And you know that anytime you make something with a lot of different flavors in it, like herbs or spices, or even like when you're cooking a stew, always tastes better the next day. Mm, 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 mm. That is so bright and fresh. Love that. Ooh, love that lemon in there. All right, so I'm going to use some of this green goddess dressing to mix in here and make my tuna salad. Let me get another spoon out here. I probably will not use this whole entire thing. And you do this based on 
how how much uh, creaminess you like in your tuna salad. Let me take this out of here. There we go. Oh, I love those herbs in there. Do you know the difference between a spice and an herb? There we go. An herb comes from uh, the leaf and a spice comes from the stem. <sighs> My mouth is watering already. Look how delicious that is. Yum. All right, I'm gonna set that aside and let all the flavors get in there. I think I wanna add a little bit of garlic to that. A little bit of Penzi's garlic. Ah, smells so good. And you know, this is even gonna be better the next day if I had the wherewithal to let it sit, but it probably won't. All right, let me put this aside and in a bit we're gonna try that and we're going to try the eclair cake. So delicious. I've only had eclair cake a couple of times and it was probably when I was a Boy Scout leader or, some, or Girl Scout leader, something like that. People used to bring all their delicious items uh, to our meetings. All right, so eclair cake, this is fun. This is made in a nine by 13 pan, just like this. Now I made half a recipe yesterday and that's what I'm gonna do again today. But I wanted to show you how you put the crackers in the bottom of the pan. So you have to break them up, of course, but they fit right there in the bottom. You're gonna use three layers, this one, middle layer, and the top layer. However, comma, mine are going to go into this pan. So they're not going to quite fit. I'll have to break them up a little bit. See what's going on over here. Break this one this way. I can fit that in a little bit. And even if they're overlapping, that's okay. Put this one over here and let me put this one over here. Okay, so I have this first layer in like this, and because this pan is slanted this way, as we get to the top, you're gonna to be able to put in some more. So let's get that pudding part going. Isn't this such an easy lunch, like you can hardly stand it? I know, and so delicious. Now for this recipe, um, a pack of instant pudding usually requires two cups of milk, but I am going to use not quite two cups, about one and three quarter cups. Put that in there. Or one and a half cups, whatever you prefer. One and three quarters seems to work out pretty good. And then just pour my milk in there. Now remember this is instant pudding. We're not doing any cooking with this. So it'll be about, this starts to set in less than five minutes. Just gonna stir this around for a couple minutes. And even as we're doing this, you're gonna see that this is going to start to set already too. What's on your agenda today? Anything fun? I have uh, some guests leaving the carriage house today. So now we have to allow 72 hours between guests before we can have anybody else in there. That just gives us time to clean up everything and sanitize everything. Every surface has to be wiped down, all the bedding washed, and um, all other fabric items steamed. Okay, see what's going on? This is starting to set already. Now, on the whole recipe, you're gonna use a whole container of Cool Whip. Since I'm using half, here's my half container of Cool Whip. And then um, you're going to fold this in, and that means you do this kind of gently. So you're not um, beating the heck out of this because you this gives it a little fluff and shape and substance. Mm, don't you want to lick that? And you can put that in your coffee. It'd be so good. So I'm just going to very gently stir this. If I were actually folding this, I would be doing a motion more like this. Now this whipped cream is Cool Whip. It kind of keeps its substance all by itself. If you were using real whipped cream, and you know, you just would take heavy cream and beat that around. You would have to be a little bit more gentle with that. All right. Do you see what I have going on here so far? Perfect. All right, let me get a spatula and Move that around a little bit. There we go. I want to make sure I have everything off the bottom. 
Oh, see, lots in the bottom. There we go. And this is going to be a little bit liquidy, and that's okay because it firms up in the refrigerator. You know, it looks good already. Anybody having a 4th of July picnic? Yeah, that's a little bit of time away, but these are going to be some great things that you can have with that picnic. All right. Have this mixed up pretty well. Need to get rid of uh, that big yellow streak in there. So good. There we go. All right. So I have my graham crackers down here. I'm going to pour about half of this in here. That looks about like half, maybe a little more. <coughs> Don't you want to eat that already? I do. Sometimes you're just in the mood for something big and gooey and delicious. You know, this would be so good with a cup of coffee, wouldn't it? All right, I'm going to take some more graham crackers. That goes on the top of this. Lay these in here. Ooh, I'll get up, put them like that. No, I don't know if I like that. There, that fits. Put them this way. That fits a little bit better. There we go. Put that in there. Second half goes on top of this. So this loaf pan um, is not quite half of 9 by 16. No, 9 by 13. Ah, uh, looks good. There. Now, one more layer of crackers on top of this. Get my graham crackers going there. This goes on top. Now, for this one, I'm not going to use an entire bag of box of graham crackers, but pretty, pretty close. This takes up, uh, this took up two packs. So it might be a little bit different when you um, put it in a 9 by 13. Now, on top of this, you can do two things. You can get some chocolate frosting from a can or make your own, or you can put make some um, chocolate ganache. And we've made that before. You know how to do that, right? I'm going to heat up about a quarter cup of milk in my microwave oven until it's boiling. Then I'm gonna take about a half cup of chocolate chips and stir that in there. Now it's gonna be very liquidy and I will pour that on top, but then as this sits, it kind of comes together. Now, here's the sad part about this. Gotta make this 24 hours in advance because these graham crackers have to get really soft and everything kind of ooze in there to make that cake. Let's see what our milk is doing here. Yep, that looks good. Okay, quarter cup of milk here. Yeah, nice and boiling. Put my chocolate chips in, stir these up, and then as you stir these up, that hot milk melts the chocolate chips. Pretty slick, right? Mm. Everything smells so good in here today. All right, and do you see how liquidy this is? That's okay. So this is not going to, um, when it sits, it's not going to dry like, like hard like a candy bar or like a chocolate chip. It's going to be a little bit softer, just like you would be biting into an eclair from the bakery. Oh, that looks so good. Look at that. Okay, this goes right on top of here. Oh, nice. And then I'm going to just take a knife or a spoon or a fork and spread that on top of that. I know it looks so good already, doesn't it? My mouth is watering for this. I do need a cup of coffee to go with this. Didn't, didn't have time to make a cup of coffee this morning, so I'm feeling it. All right. Oh, look at that. How good is that? All right, so are you ready to taste these things now? I'm so excited. All right, so first we're going to try that tuna sandwich. Mm. I um, am going to put it on an English muffin. So I toasted my English muffin. To me, this is how an English muffin needs to be finished. I don't like those flappy, wilty English muffins. I'm gonna put a couple of tomatoes on that. 
Then I'm going to put a little bit of salt on top of that. You know what else would be good with this? If um, you had like an avocado on that, wouldn't that be good? And here's my tuna, yum. Put some on top of there. Mm. I don't know what to, what to do next. Okay, big bite. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. So good. Mm. Mm-hmm. That was good. Mm -hmm. Now, let me get the eclair cake. Mm. I love the taste of that parsley and basil in that. Probably have parsley and basil in my teeth now, right? All right, this is the one I made yesterday, and look at the bottom of it. So the crackers didn't all come together there, and that's okay, because it's gonna be delicious. Okay, get the top off of this. There's our chocolate ganache right on top. And let me get uh, something to take this out with. Yum. I know this looks just like an eclair. And it's going to taste just like an eclair, too. Mm. It's the best way I could get that out and put that on my plate. On these forks. See if I can fork it up and get it out of there. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, I missed my bottom cracker. The first piece is always the hardest to get out, don't you think? But look at the inside of that. Doesn't that look good? Perfect for a 4th of July picnic. Oh my gosh, look at that. So delicious. All right, yum. You get the first bite. There you go. Mmm. I said mmm before I even had it in my mouth. This is really good. You will want coffee with this. So delicious. All right. That's it for today. And remember, if you like this, please share this on your Facebook page. Don't forget to sign up for our YouTube channel. It's free. Like us on Facebook. We're shooting for, let's see, our next level is 1,700 likes. We only have about 70 more to go. So be sure, be sure you do that. And then I will see you again on Wednesday. We're going to make some crunchy apple salad. That came from my friend Donna, and it is so delicious. All right, I will see you again on Wednesday. I'm Nancy, your favorite innkeeper from Old Square Inn in Mountjoy, Pennsylvania in beautiful Lancaster County. And don't forget, you be the light today. Something good is going to happen to you and through you. See you again soon. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Nancy here. If you like this video and want to see more, just click on the subscribe button below. And if you want to try even more delicious recipes from our award-winning B&B, click on the link in the description for our Let's Cook with Nancy cookbook. Makes a great gift for the chef in your life, even if that chef is you. All right, I'll see you in the next video.